from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. He answered them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Take up your cross and follow me. Not take up the ladder you have decided to climb. Not take up your positions of power in the world. Take up your cross. Choose sacrifice and service. Choose to follow Jesus, who will lead you not to the top, but to the bottom. Mark Twain once said, it isn't the parts of the Bible I don't understand that bother me. It's the parts I do understand. Maybe we would like this passage to be a little less clear. We'd like to be able to tell ourselves that we can live a comfortable and easy life while following Jesus, without the necessity of courage, or the challenge of seeing the pain that is around us. It's real, that pain. It's real. And it comes from an absence of connection with God and with each other. It comes from a sense of aloneness that we cannot be back by trying harder to be better than everyone else. Martin Luther said the temptation is to engage in a theology of glory one that is built on what appears to be self-evident about life, based on assumptions about how God is expected to act in the world. Power means winning and taking away power from the losers. Jesus, the Messiah, he came to overthrow the Roman government. Jesus will make it clear who is in and who is out, and whoever we are, well, clearly we are on the right side. That's the self-evident part. We don't have a theology of glory. That's not what Jesus gives us. Jesus gives us a theology of the cross. Jesus leads us to a theology of the cross. Instead of glorifying accomplishment, we get suffering. Instead of wisdom, we get folly. As long as we allow ourselves to believe we can walk some kind of fine line, balancing on a wall, hedging our bets, we will look for shortcuts 
that go around the concept of suffering. We will look for a theology that makes life turn out okay for whoever we have determined are the good guys. At the Lenten soup supper and Bible study over at Holy Innocence, Father Frank told us about his mentor, the priest that taught him what it meant to be a priest. This man told him, his last words to him were, if I had to say one thing, it's that you have to choose. You have to choose. You can't be on two sides at once. We have to choose. Who will we follow, really? The Messiah that will make us rich and save us from any of life's problems and make us win any disagreement and make us king of our present world? I don't know who that Messiah is, but I don't see how that can be Jesus. Jesus says to his disciples, Jesus says to us, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. When we take on the powers of the world, that's what happens. When we are determined to show the world that God's love is the ultimate power, which means we make a choice for Jesus and for the cross, we lose our lives. But the thing is, when we don't do that, when we try instead to let ourselves believe that human power is the answer and human success at the expense of others is the way to life, we are lost. Because our real selves, our genuine selves, know the truth. We are connected. Our salvation is bound together. We can feel the truth of the gospel inside, disturbing any peace we have that comes at the expense of other people. When we take up our crosses, we do it out of love. We do it out of a sense that serving others is the way Jesus led us to serve the world. Whatever change the world needs that tugs at us, that we feel in us, we meet it with the love that we have to give and the gifts that we bring to the journey. We meet the world's pain with our willingness to be connected. And we say yes. When we do that, we know our path will not be smooth and our way will not be easy. We know that it will take courage, but the courage it will take will be the courage to be the self that has chosen to follow Jesus because we hear the truth of his words in our soul. Father Frank's mentor peace chose at 86 86, to go back to Africa to live with people who needed him. And when danger came to the house he was living in, he stood between the danger and the other people. He died, making the choice he believed in. That sounds too hard. We don't want it to be that hard. It won't be that hard for most of us. Most of us will not have to make the choice that leads to our ultimate sacrifice. Most of us instead will sacrifice a little bit every day if we choose to follow Jesus by taking up our cross. We will lose our hold on winning life the way people in the world measure it. We will give money away instead of keeping it all for ourselves. We will choose to walk with people we don't agree with instead of safely staying on our side of the fence. We will reach out to someone who doesn't have any friends, even if it makes us look strange to other people. A friend of mine in high school did that. He went and sat on the bus with a girl who had food on her face that everyone was making fun of. 
So then they made fun of him, heckled him all the way to school. His brothers came home and told his mom the odd thing that he had done. And she asked him why, and he said, I don't know, Jesus? Taking up our cross, deciding to follow Jesus. That is a decision that takes courage. But there's good news about that. As Brene Brown says, courage is contagious. Every time we choose courage, we make everyone around us a little better and the world a little braver. We make our choices, our own decisions, but we can live them in community. We can make our world a little braver, a little more willing to see life through the lens of Jesus, who points us toward the way of love. And the power of servanthood and the joy of walking the path that leads to peace. We can choose to find the genuine life that we know inside, the one we were created to live. May each of us find a way to ask ourselves who we choose to follow and live out that choice more and more every day. In Jesus' name, amen.